So I'm going to prove Euler's identity, which relates the, the exponential function e um, i, which is the square root of negative 1, um, pi, and um, 1, unity. So e to the i pi plus 1 is 0. Um, I'm at the very least going to try and justify why why this is. So, um, this is, I've written here Taylor's theorem. Um, well, actually, this is this is a specific um, case of, of, of a Taylor series. So, this is actually a Maclaurian series, but it, it doesn't really matter. Um, essentially, we can write any function as an infinite sum, an infinite series of um, polynomials. Um, in this case, we can, we're can writing um, f of x as um, the function evaluated at 0, um, x equals 0, um, plus x times the, um, um, times the derivative of the function evaluated at 0, um, plus x squared over 2 um, times the second derivative of the function evaluated at 0, and so on until we um, get this um, identity for the, the nth term in this series. Um, x to the n of n factorial times by the nth derivative of the function evaluated at zero. Um, so this is important because in order to prove this identity we will need to be writing um, some um, of these uh, Maclaurian series. Um, but I'm going to start off actually first with the definition of e to the x. Uh, x can really be anything, um, a real or, or complex number. C complex meaning that it's um, uh, not just necessarily 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 2.3, or, or any rational number. It can also be multiples of the square root of negative 1, which is an imaginary number. But anyway, um, definition of e to the x is actually the same as um, this exponential function here, um, which is written as, as this um, series, this infinite series, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus, and so on, x to the n over x n factorial, and um, that's how you can write um, the exponential of x. Um, you can prove this um, by, uh, by by assuming that the definition of um, e to the x is a function that can, that when di differentiated gives e to the x again, so when you differentiate it you still get the same value, um, but it's perfectly reasonable to simply define the exponential function as this infinite series. You don't really have to derive this. You can just define uh, the the exponential function to, to be this thing here. Um, so, with that in mind, uh, the, the 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 ultimate aim here is to um, express um, e to the x in terms of other functions, uh, and these are going to be trigonometric functions. Um, so, with that aim in mind, I think it's useful to um, generate some Maclaurian series um, out of the sine and cosine function. Um, okay, um, to do that we're obviously going to be needing to find the derivatives, like like I say if you look here we've got um, lots of different derivatives of our function so we're going to be needing to find derivatives. So let's see how sine and cosine differentiate. So obviously the, diff the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of cosine in turn is negative sine, derivative of negative sine is um, negative cosine, and the derivative of negative cosine is sine, and we see we've, we've got back to the start here. So um, when you differentiate sine or, or cosine, um, you only have to differentiate it four times before you get back to the start. Um, so the, 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 the nth derivative of sine or cosine is very predictable. And I've actually written out um, explicitly the Maclaurian series for sine, um, uh, uh, simply using this template here. So we started off with f of x is equal to f of 0. So this is f of x is equal to sine of x in this case, is equal to f of 0. So sine of x evaluated at 0, so that's sine of 0, um, plus x, which we have here, um, times by the derivative of um, sine of x, which is, as we've seen here, cosine of x. So we need to evaluate that one at 0, and so on. And um, this gibberish here is, is just a way that you can express the, the nth, um, nth term, but it, it isn't really necessary because this, this all simplifies down um, simply because um, of this sort of predictability. And um, I'm not going to go too heavily into this, but you should be able to work it out by looking at, at, uh, at, at this script here. Um, so 
you boil that down and you end up noticing that some of these terms disappear. Um, anything with sine of zero is going to disappear because sine of zero is zero. Um, so all these sine terms are going to disappear. Um, so only the cosine terms are going to remain. Um, cosine of zero is one. Um, so we're going to get an x term here. Um, and, and because because the because the cosine repeats every other derivative, um, we kind of expect that we'll get an x term, an x cubed term, an x to the five term, and so on. And um, also because the negative sign here, um, again every other cosine has a um, has a negative sign, we expect the negative sign to also repeat. So the first the first term, the x term, is just going to be a positive x. Um, the x cubed term is going to be negative. The x to the 5 term is going to be positive, and, and so on, just because of this sort of um, um, cosine repeating. Um, so we can kind of see uh, intuitively from that that the Maclaurian series of sine x is going to be x minus x cubed over, over 3 factorial. I get these, these factorials simply come from this, this n factorial factor here. Um, so sine x is x minus x cubed over 3 factorial plus x5 over 5 factorial minus x to the 7 over 7 factorial. And you can see that the pluses and the minuses alternate and the um, power goes up by 2 each time um, which I've tried to at least justify uh, and this is incidentally the, the, the nth term of the sum but you can see how how, 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 how sine x kind of goes um, so that's sine x and I've written it out here again for clarity um, you, you can do exactly the same for cosine x um, and it, it's not too unsurprising that we get um, even powers instead of odd powers because again with this with this repeatability if you st if you start with in, in this position rather than this position you kind of expect it to be um, shifted um, so instead of x to the three you're getting x to the two instead of x to the um, five you're getting x to the four and so on but the negative signs are still going to be th be there so um, the al the alternating positive to negative um, so we've got an alternating positive and negative here for cosine. Um, just reminding ourselves uh, about the definition of uh, um, the exponential of x, which, which again is written here. Um, well, the ultimate aim again is, is, is we want to rewrite the exponential function in terms of the sine and cosine. And you can kind of see that we're sort of quite close because um, the exponential function has, a power, has, 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 a, um, has an x, um, an x to the 0 here, an x to the 1, an x to the 2, an x to the 3, an x to the 4, and so on. Um, and the factorials are also are also correct with with our n factorial, um, and you can see here that that, that we've got um, um, an x an x to the three and x to the five, and, and the cosine has the one and the x to the two and the x to the four. So you can kind of see that if we were to add the sine and the cosine together, we'd have all the powers of x that we need. The factorial bits would be right as well. The only thing that kind of wouldn't be right is the, the negative signs because this the exponential series doesn't actually have any negative signs in it everything's positive um, so we need to do something slightly clever than just adding sine and cosine in order to get e to the power of x but intuitively that's sort of the lines that we want to be going down um, so with this in mind what we want to do is make sure that all these um, negative signs in the sine x part and all the negative signs in the cosine x part disappear. We want to get rid of the negative signs and make them more positive signs. We need to manipulate these series a little bit so that they become more positive. Um, and the way to do it um, involves the square root of negative 1. Um, so the cosine one we're going to start with because it's a little bit easier. Um, so we're letting x equal i, y. And remember, i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So the square of i is equal to negative 1. Um, so we let x equal i, y. And if we substitute i, y into the, the cosine x, um, we can see what happens. We get cosine of i, y is 1 um, minus i, y squared um, over 2. In fact, obviously, the factorial will stay the same, um, plus i, y to the 4 over 4 factorial. And um, if you look at exactly what happens to... Um, each each of the terms here, um, the sort of um, i squared the i squared type terms make negative one. So you can see we've got an i squared term here makes negative one, and that um, hits this negative here and makes a positive. So we've actually by doing that we've made all of the negative parts here the x squared, the x to the six, because obviously um, um, actually I'll come back to that in a second. But but by doing this we made all the the um, 
um, negative parts positive. But we need to check that we're not also making the positive parts negative. Obviously, this one isn't changing because there's, there's no x to substitute our i y into. Um, but let's check i y to the 4. What does that make? Well, i to the 4 is equal to i squared squared. Um, and i squared, we've, we're going to say is negative 1. That's how it's defined. And negative 1 squared is 1. So the powers of 4 don't do anything at all because i to the power 4 is 1. Um, so i to the power 6... Um, which which is which we can think of as i to the power 4 times i squared. The i to the power 4 is just 1, and i squared is negative 1. So we can see that for the, for the, uh, for the, um, for the y to the power 6 term, um, we're going to get a negative, which hits the negative um, that, would, that would come here and makes a positive. And for the i to the power 8, for, for the y to the power 8 term, we, we've got two, we've got i to the power 4 and another i to the power 4, and, that, and that's just... 1 times 1, so that's still 1. So we can see that by um, by doing this little substitution, we've actually got rid, in the cosine bit, in the cosine term of all the negative terms. We made them all positive. So we can write this out, that cosine of i, y is 1 plus y squared over 2 factorial plus y to the 4 over 4 factorial, and so on. All the negative signs have gone just by um, sticking an i in here, which is great. That's half of the, the problem already done. Um, but we need to do the same with um, these um, sign series, which is a little less obvious. Um, but let's just try something similar. The I, uh, um, substituting um, x for i, y worked quite well with the, 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 the cosine bit. So let's try it with the sign series. Um, so sine of i, y gives this. Um, uh, unfortunately, we've got a lot of i's, which is, not ha which is not really ideal. We don't really want there to be an i here. Um, we'll have to deal with that later. But let's look and see if we can at least get rid of these negative signs without touching the positive signs. So what's i cubed? Um, well, i cubed is i times i squared. And i squared is negative 1. Um, so negative 1 times i is negative i. Um, so we are indeed getting a negative term in, 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 the, in the, the y cubed part, which is hitting the, this negative sign and, and making a positive sign, which is great. That's what, exactly what we want. We want all these terms to become positive. Uh, but let's check that the positive bits aren't going negative. So what's i to the power 5? Well, i to the power 5 is i squared times i cubed. Um, well, we know i cubed is equal to negative i. Um, so, um, so what we have really is, is we have negative i um, times i squared. And i squared is, is just negative 1. Uh, and negative i... Um, times negative one is plus plus i, which which is which is what we've got here. Um, so again, we've got a positive, which which works great. Which works great. Sine of i y is i y plus i y um, cubed over three factorial plus i y to the five over five factorial, and so on. And all of the negative terms have become positive, and all the positive terms have stayed positive, which is great. Um, however, we've got this annoying i which we don't really want, because this exponential series doesn't have any i's in it, it's just got, um, it's just got um, normal numbers. We want to get rid of the i, and there's, a, there's quite an easy way to do that. You simply multiply this by negative i, because uh, obviously i times i, which is i squared, is negative 1. Again, remember, um, i is defined as being the square root of negative 1, so negative, the square root of negative 1 squared is negative 1. Um, so we times that by minus i, we've got i squared being negative 1, but then we've got an additional negative from, the, from this negative here, uh, and that makes positive. So that actually gets rid of all the i's, um, because it, 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 makes, it turns all the i's into plus 1's. Um, so by multiplying sine i y by negative i, we get rid of all the um, negative 1's. Sorry, we get rid of all the i's, and we just have this. And now we notice that we have the, the, the y, the y cube, the y to the 5th, and so on, and from the, from the sine part, and um, the squared, the 4, the 6, and so on, from the, from the cosine part. And we notice that if we add these together, we get something that looks like this. All we have to do is add these two together now, and we get the exponential part, which is exactly what I've done.
e to the x is equal to cosine of i x minus i sine of i x. And I've just switched x for y because because the choice of a variable is completely arbitrary, so I, I can do that. Um, it, it doesn't really matter. e to the y is equal to cos i y minus i sine i y. It doesn't really matter. It's just it's just a case of um, using a dummy variable. So we've actually got an expression here for e to the x in terms of cosines and sines. And now we're actually really close to proving um, Euler's identity. Um, so how 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 exactly do we prove Euler's identity? Well, let's have a look at let's have a look at Euler's identity to begin with. We've got an e to the i here. Um, so one can kind of think, well, what happens then if we um, stick an i into this expression? Um, we might be able to try and derive something like Euler's identity for that way. At least we know that the Euler's identity has an e to the i something. So what happens if we um, put an i in there? Um, okay, so let's let's do that. Let, again, let's use the substitution x equals i y, which is um, benefited as well all the way through. But let's use it again. So e to the i y, again, just, just substituting x for i y, is equal to cosine of i times i y, which is i squared y, minus i sine, and then again, um, x is i y, so that's i squared y here. And of course, i squared is negative 1, as we agreed. So that's equal to cosine of minus y minus i sine of minus y. Um, and now we can make use of these nice identities here, that cosine of minus y is equal to cosine of y, and, cosine, and sine of minus y is equal to minus sine of y. And the reason for this, I've got a graph here to, to explain why. Um, so cosine of y, so cosine of any positive value, the red curve is, by the way, the cosine curve, Cosine of a positive value is equal to its, it, it, the cosine of the same negative value. You can see there's like a reflection in the y-axis. So if you take this value here and this value here, they're, they're, they're the same value, and this value here and this value here and so on. So we can see that cosine of the positive value is equal to the cosine of the negative value, which is great. And if we look at the sine, va if we look at the sine, then the, op the opposite is true. We can see that the, the, the sine of the positive value here is actually the negative of the sine of the negative value. It, it, it's flipped over. So when you go back, so, so, so something that's positive, um, something that's positive um, in, in the positive part is is actually negative. Something that's negative in the in the positive part is is positive in the negative part. So you can see that um, how that works. Um, so that's just a quick justification of, of this: that cosine of minus y is, is equal to cosine of y, and sine of minus y equals to minus, minus sine of y. And all we need to do, um, therefore, is simply uh, replace um, s sim simply replace we c um, this ex this expression here um, so instead of um, a, a, a cosine of minus y um, we can replace that with the cosine of y and instead of the minus i sine of minus y we can well we can place the sine of minus y with minus sine of y um, um, and of course there's another negative here so that's going to make a that's going to make a positive um, so um, again, the the, the, co the cosine of, of minus y becomes cosine of y because th that's the same. Um, the the minus i sine of minus y, um, the, the two negatives cancel out to make a positive. So just got positive i and then um, the sine of y. So we've got e to the i y is equal to cosine y plus i sine of y, and this is actually a generalized version of Euler's identity called um, De Moivre's identity. Um, so it's very similar. This is actually slightly more powerful than Euler's identity because we can choose any value of y. Um, um, not just pi, but we can see that this equation and this equation have the same sort of format, except in the Euler's identity we were looking at y is equal to pi, and if we substitute y is equal to pi, we'll be able to find out what e to the i pi is equal to. Um, so let's do that. Um, so let y equal pi. e to the i pi is equal to cosine of pi um, plus i sine of pi. Um, and cosine of pi is negative one. Uh, you could probably see from from um, from this graph here that that here we go. Cosine of pi is negative one. Um, sine of pi zero. So, so the sine of pi doesn't, doesn't make any difference. So e to the i pi is equal to negative one. And all we need to do is put the, the uh, put this negative one onto the other side and add one to both sides, and 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 we get e to the i pi plus one is equal to zero. Um, so that's Euler identity, which I've, which I've, if not a formal proof, it's at least a good justification of why this works. Um, thank you for watching.